What is good guys, Randy here, back for week number 5 of the GBA D-League. Now before I go ahead and get into the video, you guys are going to know this is post-com, but I will explain everything why, like the way it is at the end of the video, because uh, what happened prior to the match, match will actually affect our future uploads for the GBA, um, as well as my streaming schedule, so just letting you guys know that right now, um, so don't be afraid, um, you know, um, but yeah, I'll explain what happens, you'll know why everything is the way it is at the end of the video. Um, like I said, it will affect future uploads. But nonetheless, we're taking on Magic Activator, coach of the Memphis Drizzlies. Um, I mispronounced that at the end of the uh, last week's battle, so I apologize about that. But you guys good? Should go check out his channel. He's actually a really solid like commentator. I love the way he commentates his battles. Um, he's actually one in three right now because um, he actually picked up a win against Greg last week. So I um, mean, we're, we're sitting at three and one. So this match is huge. We need to win this match, and if we win this match, um, it gives us cushion going into the last four games because. Um, we'll be at four and one, and if we win, stay at four and one, then it gives us cushion because um, if we get a little bit of help, assuming everything stays the way it is right now, with Aster on top, me at second, Jolt at third, and um, Leo, Leo and Jolt, if they switch around in case like differential changes apart, um, if that happens, we're good. Like if we all stay the same, um, but uh, Newcastle can catch up as well, um, as well as Dan Donicky, he could catch up. So. I'm definitely going to need a little help if I were to lose this game, but if I don't lose this game, if I win, then I can actually probably afford to lose, maybe, I say maybe, with like a heavy maybe, I could afford to lose three of my last four games, potentially. Um, I would not want that to happen, but um, it's imperative to have that kind of cushion because prior to joining this league, I actually had, I thought I had no chance at playoffs, but sitting right now, I have a good chance, so this match was huge, so... As you can see here, team uh, builder. Um, you guys know what I brought from the um, from my team builder. You guys saw that already. But um, he actually brought us me and Shao Landers T, the Milotic, Jolteon, Togekiss, and the Arcanine. So uh, he didn't bring Venusaur or Cartana, which was two Mons that like I kind of had a lot of fear of. Um, but uh, he actually didn't bring those. He actually brought us me and Shao. Um, he had Landris and uh, Jolteon. Jolteon was a, it's to be expected. I kind of didn't expect it a little bit, but. You know, what's to be expected. Arcanine was something I really wasn't ready for too much. But realistically, it wasn't that big of a threat. All it did was this wall, my a scissor, and this... That's all I really did. Uh, besides that, I didn't really do much in this matchup. But uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, again, this is Proscom. Again, I'll explain everything why, the way it is at the end of the video. But nonetheless, hope you guys enjoy the battle. Let's go ahead and get into it here. So I do opt to lead with my uh, LeBron James because I wanted to get on my rocks immediately because he only had one former hazard control. And Togekiss is weak to my Nido King. So that was my thought process there. I see leads with Mian Shao, the Tai Lee. Um, and I had completely forgot about this thing being a lead with Fake Out. Uh, I always thought it would just be like a scarf set. But um, if I had brought Protect, I would have been in better shape. So now if he does have Ice Punch here, um, I'll just die and not get up rocks, which would really suck for me. Um, but I just went for Stealth Rock anyways and just hope he didn't have it as he U-turns here. Um, unfortunately he didn't have it. I'm pretty sure he got to Ice Punch. So if I'm wrong about that, then that's my, my own fault. But, um, realistically, he doesn't have a great switch into this. He would have to go into his, like, Scarf Lander, his T. Um, but with all that damage I've taken already, I'm actually going to die to an offensive Earthquake, despite me having Shooka Berry. So that kind of sucked. Um, he does bring in his Milotic, um, which was, um... A good good answer to this thing, because, you know, most Needle King are special. So I go right on my Meloetta here, because I know I take any hit from this thing, because um, my special defense stat is humongous. Now, um, prior to this matchup, I actually almost considered running Calm Mind over Psy Shock. But, like I said before, I needed Psy Shock for Jolteon, and potentially, like, an Assault Fist Komala. But he does burn me, which doesn't really matter too much. Um, so I do Psy Shock just to test the waters here a bit. And uh, given that it does around 50% um, prior to Leftovers... We know he's running a bit of a mixed defensive set as he recovers just the scatter damage, which is good on his part. So we know he's not max pedef, but then again, we know he's not max defense either. So um, although we know nothing about its special defense, you know, from that hit. Um, so I just go over Thunderbolt here just to gate and test the waters a bit once again. It does less than half, and like I said, he's not max pedef, but he's not max defense either. So he's definitely running a bit of a bulkier set, probably enough to take one Thunderbolt for sure, if I had to guess. Um, but yeah, Milotic here is pretty much walling on Meloetta here. And prior to, in the team builder, you guys know that I said Meloetta actually did a lot to his team. But Meloetta is already down to 34 HP, just getting worn down by Bird, Life Orb, and Skull Chip. So um, thinking I could probably save it for later, I do switch on my Shaka Zulu, predicting a uh, recover. Um, and of course, again, on my terrain here, this pressures his team a lot because I don't think the Landorus is going to be Choice Scarf because, like I said, Choice Scarf Landorus allows Halucha to set up. So he does go for recover as I expected. So. 
here I made a very, very huge mistake. Um, I was kind of just on autopilot here. I clicked Thunderbolt, knowing he has two immunities, Jolteon being the safest one. I had Nature's Madness too. I don't know why I didn't click it. That was always the play. So, like, I was just on autopilot. I don't know what I did. Um, I know I've been playing safe these past couple of weeks, but Nature's Madness was the safest play. This was just a dumb play from Thunderbolt. Um, so, Jolteon's up at full after rocks because of my his Volt Absorb. He does reveal the HP ground, or at least I believe it is HP ground, as I go for the single tackle. Just to see how much damage he's going to do. I'm assuming it's like a Wish set, if not like an Assault Vest set. And the reason why I assumed it was HP Ground, because HP Ground hits Coco and the Needle King. So that's why I assumed it was HP Ground, as opposed to like HP Poison or, or um, well, Poison and Ground are the only two weaknesses, so you get my point there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, Twingle Tackle does only 50% to Jolteon, meaning it was indeed Assault Vest. So I just switched out here. Um, I know the um, I know he's probably going to go for Volt Switch here, so I just had to sack my Meloetta. Um, and Jolteon does knock out my Meloetta here, so go ahead and do some live editing. Um, unfortunately for you guys here, um, but um, nonetheless, he just will switch out. This gives me a bit of initiative now as he goes back to his tie league, which was the right uh, switch in. And right now, I don't have a great answer to it, just right now, so I'm forced to go LeBron just to sack it because LeBron realistically doesn't do too much to his team because Shuka Berry is already much, pretty much worthless now. Um, I can't break through um, Milotic. Uh, I can break through Togekiss. I wall it as well, somewhat, but that's not really a, a great option. And I had nothing else to switch to it either. I guess I could have went Scizor. But Arcanine, which is always going to come in anyway, so... Uh, unfortunately, LeBron does go down to the knockoff afterwards. So Nino King just dies just to, you know, get a free switch into a top of Coco to fire off another Dazzling Gleam because he doesn't have a great, like, the greatest answer, you know, into it right now. So, fortunately, he didn't have rocks this game, so that was something to note. So, yeah, Coco's in here. I'm going to go ahead and click my Dazzling Gleam because it's the safest play. I uh, don't want him bringing in a Jolteon again as he does bring out his Togekiss. Now, this is a pretty big turn because... He already knows that I know that he has to Jolteon can come in, Landers can come in. So I can either go for another Dazzling Gleam, predicting a Defog or like a Toxic, I guess, I don't know. Or I can Thunderbolt just like going really hard. And I actually did go for it, so I made a pretty ballsy play and it worked out there. So we were able to knock out Togekiss, which was huge. Um, it wasn't that great in the matchup considering what I had left. Um, well, it helped with Hydreigon, but like he already took rock damage, therefore he was already in range of uh, Head Smash. But... Nonetheless, he does bring back his Jolteon, and I do not want to take a Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt will do a crap ton to me given that my terrain is up. So um, I have to find a sack, and my sack is Rock, Paper, Scissor. I could have probably went Hydreigon, but if he Volt Switched as he did, he could easily went into his Mianxiao and just uh, fake out High Jump Kick, whatever. Um, I really wish I had Protect on uh, my Hydreigon or my Coco because that would have helped a lot. But nonetheless, I'm not in good shape right here. I'm down two Mons, but I'm still okay because Halucha could still do work here. Um, now here... I Mega Evolve and go for the Bullet Punch, expecting Fake Out, knowing that I have two turns of terrain left. I want to have to knock me out here so I can go into my Halucha and go for game. And honestly, that's what I—that's what my, my uh, thought process was. I was playing extremely impa impatient. Um, I was hoping he knocked me out there, so there was only one turn of terrain left. So I make a pretty, uh, pretty ballsy play. I expected him to probably either High Jump Kick or U-Turn. And I went straight to my Halucha. Um, now... On paper, it seems like it's all right because Arcanine realistically and Landorus can't do much to me because the wor the Arcanine would have to have Wild Charge to like actually do damage to me. Um, Fire Blitz, assuming he's defensive, wouldn't do that much to me considering I have Electric Seed and some bulk. Um, bulk to where he doesn't even know how much bulk I have. So I do go for a sub here because um, I know I can. Um, and that was a misplay as well because sub didn't matter because I wasn't able, to, I wasn't ever gonna be able to avoid the intimidate. So I definitely should have went for the swords dance uh, there, which was a huge misplay on my part. So um, this is actually in a, a decent spot for me, but not really because uh, one move I forgot to overlook about this Arcanine was indeed roar, and so I did go for SD here. Uh, I had to hope he didn't have roar here at this point to have any sort of chance, and he does reveal the Roar. And that's that's on me. Like, I shouldn't have ever risked Halucha, so now Halucha is going to be worthless this rest of this match because I actually do not outspeed his Mian Xiao um, with no with no speed investment, like no no boost from Unburden. So um, I pretty much threw away Halucha for nothing, which was a huge misplay on my part. So going to Hydreigon, just switching into it because I know I wall Arcanine. Um, well, I, I got Roared out, so my bad. So I go for Surf here. Probably should have clicked Dark Pulse because Dark Pulse to Milotic would have done a decent amount of damage to it. Um, so my only hope to kill this Milotic is pretty much to Dark Pulse flinch it twice into Draco Meteor. 
And if I have actually Dark Pulse on that initial switch in, um, I would have been okay, I think, because Dark Pulse actually does, um, as you can see here from this damage, an, an okay amount of damage. So he would have been below half if I had went for it the first time, and I probably could have... Um, uh, I mean, it would have forced him to recover earlier, but, um, you know, I take the Scald here, and now my only hope to kill this Milotic is to Dark Pulse into Draco Meteor, because that's the only way I can kill it. Um, he doesn't have a great Dark Switch, Dark Pulse answer, uh, besides his Regenerator of Mian Shao. So uh, I do go for Draco here, just hoping it could do um, a, a bit of a uh, higher roll, but unfortunately he does tank and is able to recover. So now I'm in really bad shape, because this Milotic is going to be on the field forever. Um, although Coco still does have a realistic chance of winning, but I do need to keep, I need to keep like other Pokemon around because I need Mons to switch into Fake Out because Life Force Fake Out is going to wear down Coco because Coco's already at around, uh, half HP. So I do switch out my Hydreigon expecting another recover, um, or a Scald. Well, probably a Scald because I'm running a minus two special attack. So I do sack my, uh, Halucha there because I know it's pretty much worthless. It can't do anything else. Um, so Halucha does go down there, unfortunately for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, this Milotic at this point is just really annoying, so I do have to go on my top of Coco here and just, uh, make another 50-50 play here. Is he going to stay in, or is he going to switch into his Jolteon? And, um, it's another huge play here, because if he does switch out on my Dazzling Gleam, then I'll be in better shape. If not, I'm screwed. So, um, I do make the play. I do go for the Dazzling Gleam, and I do catch his Jolteon on the switch, and it will go down. So that's another huge thing for me, because now that's one less mana I have to worry about. Um, and I do expect that Landorus to be defensive, so um, it's not necessarily a good switch into my Dazzling Gleam. So that is something to note. So Jolteon does go down, which is huge. We still have a good shot at this with my Tapu Koko, but he does bring in his Mian Shao. So here, I'm pretty much forced to sack my Mega Scizor, because Hydreigon can still win the game if... That Mian Shao does go down, and if I injure that Milotic just a little bit to get it in range, or if I kill it with Coco. So, I do choose to go into my Scizor on the Fake Out, and I can go for a Juicy Bullet Punch. Although, I do feel like he probably should have went to Arcanine first. Um, I don't think he should have risked his uh, Mian Shao here. As you can see here, Bullet Punch actually does a really good amount of damage to him. Although, I am Jolly in Max Attack, so I'm, I'm sure he had his Calcs ready. Um, he was taking quite a long time with his, with his play, so he was definitely calking. So, um... Nonetheless, he does knock out my Scizor, so now it's down to Hydreigon and my Tapu Koko. And there's still actually a real chance here, so I do go to my Tapu Koko here. Get a free uh, uh, Dowsing Gleam, just pretty much free. I could have probably T-Bolted, that was probably the better play, in all honesty. Um, but if he went Landorus, um, I wanted to be able to chip it. Like, if, I, if he was defensive, which I knew he was going to be, then it would be in range of another one, potentially. So, I uh, do go for Dowsing Gleam on his Arcanine, and this is bad because now he can actually get some chip damage with extreme speed, which is pretty bad for me. Um, look, in hindsight, I probably should have swapped into my uh, Hydreigon, especially since he actually um, stayed in Thunderbolt, and he's go for E speed there, so I do knock out the Arcanine, which is good for me. Although Arcanine wasn't really doing much to me in this late game anyway. So now it's 3v2. Um, I know that Landorus has to be defensive, but he does go into it here, which is smart because it will live any hit. I already burned my Z move. Um, although HP Ice would do a crap ton to it, but I did not bring it here in this matchup. So here, um, I figured the best possible play was for me to stay in and go for Dazzle as he does get a crit with a Scarf U-turn. And the crit did matter. I would have tanked it because it did 36 max damage to me, assuming he was Adamant Scarf. So I'm thinking worst case scenario here. So that crit sucked. Um... Because I would have been able to... I mean, he wouldn't have choked the game. It didn't matter. Um, but And nonetheless, Ray comes in. And you guys already know what's going to happen here. He does have Scarf Landorus. He does have a uh, Mian Shao that's going to knock me out with Fake Out and um, knock off or whatever. But that's going to be a good game. We actually do drop this game 3-0. Or 0-3, I guess you should say. And Magic Activator picked up a pretty solid performance. And yeah, man. Just go for U-turn there. That's going to be the game. And yeah, that's all she wrote. So a uh, bit of a few surprises. Um, I did not expect him to bring uh, a, a Scarf Landorus because that just lets Holucha set up. But he did play it smart and had Roar on Arcanine. So I'm um, going to go ahead and explain what happened like with the video and why it's post -com. So um, before we guys start the matchup, um, I actually broke my capture card. <laughs> the USB port fell off. No joke. This is the USB port. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, this is the port, the little port there. Uh, my nails are kind of long, so it's kind of unprofessional but yeah the port fell off of my capture card this is my normal capture card i use um so it came off the loopy card so i'm going to send it in to get fixed but the other bad thing is it's actually my citra card so my citra ds my custom firmware so i can't have citra thumbnails i can't have citra postcoms 
Although I tried recording this battle live on my this this capture card because this is the capture card I use for my my VGC videos, um, and my VGC ladder ranking. Um, I probably should have just did no live recording on my other DS and had a Citra replay. I probably should have done that, but I was stupid and tried to live record it. But the dimensions were off, and it was just nasty, the video. Um, but nonetheless, um, I want to take this time to say GG to Magic Activator. He played a fantastic game. Um, this game was huge because, honestly, with no disrespect to Magic, I felt I could have won this game, given my matchup, at, 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 you know, like upon building. But he did a fantastic job of building the right set and the right team to beat my team. And I played way too impatiently. Um, I kind of forced the battle, too. I kind of did it a little early. Um, I was a little frustrated with the capture card and stuff like that. And it's no excuse. I'm not trying to make excuses for me losing. Um, I'm just letting you guys know that if, if I come across salty at any time, that's not me. I will never get salty on camera because it's a game. I want to show class to my opponent. I want to show respect. I am humble in victory or defeat. It doesn't matter. Um... But the loss does sting. It stings a lot because this actually hurts our playoff chances realistically. Like, our playoff chances have plummeted taking this loss. And, um, because next week we have Toronto. Co Jolt, coach of the Toronto Raptors. So, um, that's a match to where it's going to take a lot. Like, probably my best match to in the season to take him down. Because if I could beat Jolt, I'll be okay, I think. If I beat Jolt, I'll be alright. Because Dan, um... Um, Dan, while well, the matchup's tough for me, I feel like I can hold my own against them. I feel like, I hope, McGarren has a threat, but nonetheless, we're, we're taking it one play at a time. I'm just like, you know, this, this loss, this loss sucks. So, um, this is where it comes to like the final part of the video. So my question is for you guys, I have two options here. Um, although I'm probably going to go with option one because I'm probably going to send off the DS, but I could do live comms with this 3DS. Um, I won't have any Citra thumbnails though. Um. As well as no outline. The outlines will be here on, on this DS. This uh, these live battles, um, or I can keep my old capture card and do post comms the rest of the season with Citra. But I know Tom's probably gonna love that. People who love post com videos, but I just love live com. That's just the way I play it. Um, this week was just an exception because um, of what happened. So um, I'm probably either, I'm probably gonna do live battles with this 3DS and send the other one off to get it fixed. Um, hopefully have it back before the season's over. I hope. Um, but nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed today's battle. It was, it was a bit of a rough battle. I'm disappointed in the loss, but like I said, Magic played a hell of a good, great, great game. He's now at two and three. We're at three and two, so Magic actually has a little bit of a streak going. That's pretty cool for him. Um, but you know, this was just like a tilted match. I played very, very poorly. That Nature's Madness early on. I sacked Halucha for almost no reason. And I know what the analysts are going to say to you. They're going to be like, oh man, Tapu Koko and Halucha is getting predictable. And it is predictable. I'll give him that. But that's not the reason why I lost. I lost because I did not play correctly as well as um, Magic played. Um, he didn't play around beating those two. He played around beating the supporting cast, which helped him out immensely. Um, which is awesome for him. I'm happy he got the win. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you guys next week. We're taking on Jolt, coach of the Toronto Raptors. And, uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta win these games, man. We got, we can only afford to lose, like, one game. Like, realistically. Because, um, a 6-2, and two, or, um, yeah, a 6-3 and three record would be probably a lock for playoffs, assuming where we are now. Whereas, a 5-4 and four isn't the greatest. And, of course, 7-2 and two would be fantastic, but <laughs> that means I went out, but that's probably not gonna happen. But, nonetheless, take it one play out of 10, guys. I'll catch you guys next week. Go Rangers!